This video is going to be the first of a series about a topic very popular in applied statistics named analysis of variance. So I'm going to work really hard from here on out for the rest of the semester to keep my videos short, short, short. I've been lying about that for maybe like two, pushing three weeks at this point. My bad. So this one's going to be just an overview of analysis of variance and the plots associated with analysis of variance. So you might see this method named ANOVA somewhere. Anytime you see the acronym ANOVA, what we are referring to is analysis of variance. So that acronym ANOVA is some weird combination of analysis of variance. Uh, I don't know where that name originally came from, but it doesn't matter to us. We just are here to remember that ANOVA really translates to analysis of variance. Now, I think the weirdest thing about analysis of variance is that the goal of it is actually to compare means amongst k greater than 2 groups. So we've previously looked at um, two sample t-tests or comparing two proportions. That was essentially comparing the means of some numeric variable by two groups. Well, analysis of variance extends this idea such that we compare the means amongst some number k, which is specifically greater than two groups. So I think the weirdest part about ANOVA is that despite its name, it's really here to tell us about means of groups. So ANOVA tries to compare means amongst um, k, specifically greater than two groups, because if it was for two groups, you'd use a two-sample t-test, and if it's for one group, that's not really a group, but we'll call it a group anyway, then you're just going to use a single mean. So here we are going to compare means amongst k greater than two groups, and then eventually, in a video to follow, we will follow it up with which mean or means is or are different. So we both want to be able to make comparisons across groups and then identify with a follow-up analysis which means are different, if any. Okay, so most of our work today then is going to be in plots since, for the most part, all you need to do is write a definition that says analysis of variance is here to tell us about means amongst k groups. The world of plots in analysis of variance is a little bit different because most plots present to you just the population distribution of interest. But we're actually making statements about the means of the populations. So what you need to remember is the distinction between population distributions and sampling distributions. And because it's about means, we'll just immediately sampling distributions of the sample means one for each group. So as we go through these plots, I'm going to remind you when a specific plot is emphasizing the population distribution and when a specific plot is emphasizing the sampling distribution. So here in R, and let's zoom in just to make sure we all can read, we're going to use the library ggplot2 to make our plots and to ensure that I don't use the same variables that you all want to use in your data sets. And to give you guys some practice with dplyr, I'm going to create my own variable from 
the data set about carnivores. So before I jump into the help file, let's just go copy with command C or control C the link to the data set carnivora and type out the code that we need to read in the data set. Then I'll come back here to the help file. You can see I'm moving quick since we've done this a little bit before. And I'm going to use the two variables, SB for average brain weight and SW for average body weight to create one new variable that is a brain to body weight ratio. And I'm gonna compare across the families within the order carnivora. So I'm gonna create one new variable that I'm gonna call brain to body weight ratio, and it's gonna measure how big their brain is relative to their body weight. My going suspicion here is bigger brain weights relative to smaller bodies makes for smarter animals. I don't know if it's true. It's a hypothesis, a conjecture. Let's see if it helps us identify which families in the order carnivora have bigger mean brain to body weight ratios. So I've got my data set read in already. I am going to write into the variable named carnivora modifications of the variable carnivora. So I'm just gonna overwrite my data set where I group by family and then mutate. So mutate is a new function in the world of dplyr that will allow us to add variables to a data frame. Now remember, variables show up in the, wait, which is it, rows or columns? Uh, you got it, columns. Variables show up in the column, so I'm going to add a column onto this data set. Notice right now it's got 17 variables. I'm going to create a variable brain to body weight ratio that goes SB divided by SW. After I run that code, check that out, 18 variables. I just added the 18th variable named BR2BD, brain to body weight ratio, and it is calculated as the fraction of brain weights to body weights. Eh, now that I think about it, I didn't need to group by family at all, but oh well, that's the idea here. So we are going to use ggplot on the data set carnivora to make an appropriate plot for analysis of variance. So on the aesthetic, it is common to put the categorical variable that contains the K levels of defining the groups of interest, it's common to put this on the X axis. And on the Y axis goes the numeric variable that you are interested in. Okay, now the most common plot that people display with analysis of variance is a box plot, where we have the numeric variable of interest on the Y axis and the categorical variable defining the one, two, three, four, five, oh, a little bit overlap, six, seven, eight groups on the x-axis. Now, you've got to remember when looking at this that this is a plot about the population distributions of brain-to-body weight ratios within each family. So this is essentially the a representation with a box plot of the variable brain to body weight ratio for the family Mustelidae. But analysis of variance is telling us about means. And recall, this is not a mean. This is a median on a box plot. So box plots are generally good to give us an idea of what analysis of variance is helping us to infer about a data set, that is differences amongst means, like largely you can see there's Viveridae and Ursidae have different mean brain to body weight ratios. It turns out that bears, Ursidae, have relatively small brain weights, but their body weights are huge, 
so you get kind of small brain to body weight ratios. On the other hand, weasels and raccoons have large brains but small bodies, so they show up kind of big. Okay, another plot common to the world of analysis of variance is a violin plot. And I'm going to argue it has the same aspect that a box plot does. It is telling us something about the population distribution. But analysis of variance itself is telling us about means within those populations. So you can largely see the same thing. Orsidae has a relatively small uh, brain to body weight ratio. The whole distribution seems to be shifted down relative to Mustelidae and Pros, uh, raccoons. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I'm going to recommend that if you want to emphasize the fact that we're comparing means, instead of representing a box plot or a violin plot, you should just jump straight to the means themselves. You can, in R, very quickly just make a plot of the means of brain to body weight ratio. So check this out. Based solely on the means of brain to body weight ratio, if largest means smartest, then it appears from this data set that there is evidence to suggest that raccoons are some of the smartest creatures out there. Now look, I've been using this example for years, no joke, years, because this paper right here came out in 2016 from a bunch of pretty smart people at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. That's a great school. Oh no, that's edited by, okay, I don't know where these people are from. University of Wyoming, good school. University of Michigan, great school. Michigan State, excellent school. Minnesota, good school. These are smart people who put this out. This paper right here basically backs up the fact that raccoons are some of the smartest mammals. Boom, nailed it. I love this example. This is an excellent plot. No, this is a good plot for representing analysis of variance because it shows you directly the thing being compared. But there's an even better plot, which is why I cautioned excellent. This is an excellent plot because not only does it show us means with the points themselves that are being compared in the world of analysis of variance, it also gives us confidence intervals on those means, which is to say this plot is representing both the means being compared and the error the uncertainty associated with the means being compared. So although it looked like raccoons were the smartest based on highest mean, there's also the most uncertainty associated with raccoons' estimate of the mean brain to body weight ratio. And it's that sampling distribution that's really gonna tell us something about our overall confidence in the ability to separate out raccoons from weasels or raccoons from bears. And because there's so much uncertainty associated with raccoons, it's not clear that raccoons are actually any smarter than bears. Maybe it's true that the veridae, whatever those things are, is smarter than bears because there's like clear separation there. But it's not the case between raccoons and bears. So if you wanted to get into a really advanced plot, I don't know, you could do something like this, right? Whoops, that's not the button I wanted. Boom, look at that. There is a super advanced plot. There's a few things you could do to clean it up and I'll let you come up with your own advanced plot example that highlights both sampling distributions and population distributions. And I'd like you to include such an advanced plot in your course notes. And when you go about including it in your course notes, fix up the labels as you go. Okay.
So there it is, analysis of variance and a super advanced plot that helps us understand that analysis of variance, despite its name, is all about comparing the means, the points, across levels of some categorical variable.